Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us in one more episode of Exploring the Metaverse. I'm Hugo Swart. I lead our XR business at Qualcomm and the Metaverse uh, initiative here. And today I am super happy uh, to be talking to my friend uh, from uh, Telefonica, um, Daniel Ortega. And uh, I'll let uh, him uh, introduce yourself. Danny, welcome to, the, uh, to this episode. Why don't you say a few words about yourself and uh, what you do at Telefonica? Hi, Hugo. Nice to, nice to see you. And I, thanks for inviting me to, to have a chat with you about this uh, fascinating topic. I am heading the Group Devices Unit in Telefonica uh, in charge of the end-to-end -end responsibilities for um, anything to do with devices, whether it's smartphones and you know, smartphones and XR glasses and consumer IoT. And I do it on behalf of the Telefonica Group in Europe and in Latin America. Very cool. And uh, why don't we start with the big elephant in the room, right? Um, yeah. Six months ago, Metaverse, you know, was big hype. Everyone was talking about it. And now there seems to be less buzz around it. But, you know, what's your view on virtual reality, augmented reality, Metaverse, and how much does the hype helps or hinders uh, your investment in the Metaverse? Obviously, we don't define our strategies based on what the press may or may not say. Um, so we have our vision and our long-term strategy. We, we strongly believe and, and therefore are heavily investing in building the future around XR experiences with both AR and VR technologies. Um, we are developing experiences for our customers uh, uh, using immersive uh, technologies and um, and, and the fact that uh, uh, we might have less articles in the press now talking about metaverse or talking about XR is a little bit irrelevant for us. Um, that doesn't change our commitment and our um, appetite for for uh, innovating in this space and, and bringing outstanding experiences to our customers. They are available in, in Spain, the UK, and soon, soon in Germany. And we will have a full portfolio of XR, you know, the best curated XR product range uh, for our customers. And obviously our B2B clients as well are enjoying um, AR related experiences as well uh, in, in, in industrial use cases as well, um, which might not be uh, making the, the, the spotlights, but uh, they are already happening as well. Yeah, um, what we are doing goes beyond uh, bringing the best hardware to our customers, but we are partnering with uh, the key players in this industry because we believe we have a role to play yeah. as one of the founding members of this uh, revolution and this uh, transformation of the internet into a, sp a spatial experience, as you mentioned anyway. Yeah. Um, we are also uh, creating our own experiences, right. uh, developing in-house some of those immersive um, application and services, uh, and we are partnering as well with those uh, with uh, um, content providers, developers, uh, so and, and we are supporting them. In Telefonica, we're working in six different categories of XR experiences: uh, gaming and entertainment, retail social and communications, uh, work and education, health and fitness, and last but not least, all the industrial, industrial related use cases for B2B. That was cool, Danny. So you talked about, uh, you know, the role of the operator with the XR, the metaverse. First, you know, your stores distributing products. Second, you know, the six areas of services that um, you have. Now, can you uh, give uh, our audience an example? Right, of uh, real world applications, services that Telefonica is creating themselves uh, for immersive uh, experiences? Um, we're working with social uh, communication tools. And here we have investments with uh, startups like Matsuko, working with uh, holographic uh, video conferencing capabilities and so on. Um, clearly, gaming and entertainment is a core value proposition for our customers. And uh, we will be announcing an, a number of uh, uh, collaborations and, and, and apps and services there. Um, health and fitness, 
um, we believe is, is going to be one of the key use cases for XR in the early days, um, especially related to VR devices at home, uh, using Wi-Fi connectivity to connect and to provide outstanding quality content. Health in particular is exciting because we just announced collaboration with um, major hospitals here in Spain to help patients um, with their treatment based on XR technology. And uh, there's a, a, a really uh, innovation that we feel proud of to bring to customers because it's uh, definitely help, help, helping the lives of those customers. And uh, last but not least, there are uh, a myriad of use cases in the industrial space uh, for, the, for the B2B customers, from remote assistance to um, health and safety training, etc., that we are working on. You know, we say it here that 5G and XR were made for each other, right? I think uh, yeah. um, XR requires a lot of bandwidth, right? It's an immersive experience, right? It's very rich visually, so very high bandwidth. And the other thing is that, as we discussed, you cannot have all the processing in the head. You know, you need to count on the network to do that very heavy rendering, the very photorealistic um, uh, experience. So that's when 5G comes in and the two together are going to really revolutionize uh, um, uh, our lives, you know, in the future of computing. The combination of uh, 5G networks with uh, outstanding quality of, of service, with uh, higher bandwidth, uh, low latency, etc., and the arrival of compelling, exciting, lightweight AR glasses that uh, people will wear uh, on the street is definitely going to transform how we interact with uh, our whereabouts, where where we go, how, what type of services we can we can deploy, and how people uh, will do their day to day uh, activities, whether it's uh, uh, running out out in the streets or uh, finding information when they walk, uh, uh, having calls, uh, or you know even translating simultaneously um, with uh, with between between people from different countries and so on. So that's we, why we say that five um, G plus XR experiences and AR are truly a revolution and a transformation of our day-to-day. -day. Let's now maybe uh, switch the conversation a little bit from Telefonica itself, but to the wider telco community around the world. You know, what do you think that um, operators together need to do? Is it only Telefonica investing? Is it you with uh, other like-minded operators around the globe? Maybe tell us a little bit more about what we've uh, talked about in Barcelona just uh, um, a few uh, weeks ago. So we had the idea to create this, this white paper, uh, Hugo. Uh, and I think it's been a joy to work with other telcos uh, because we have the same vision in terms of having uh, default architectures that avoid the fragmentation problem. Uh, we don't want to repeat some of the mistakes in the early days of the smartphone industry. Um, we believe that uh, in order for a mass adoption of XR products and, and experiences, um, uh, interoperability and open standards are vital. Uh, and having uh, scalable, sustainable uh, architectures that are uh, uh, deployed uh, by multiple players that will then bring um, more innovation and, and therefore a better choice to customers is what it is necessary at this stage. So we have to avoid falling into the trap of close, close ecosystems and um, uh, non-interoperable interoperable solutions. Uh, otherwise, we, we are going to extend um, the peri period until we, we arrive to a, mass, a critical mass of uh, consumer adoption yeah. in this space. You know, just uh, for our, our audience, if you missed, you know, in uh, uh, MWC Barcelona, uh, we had uh, a press release with the uh, seven global operators coming together um, around um, Snapdragon Spaces, around creating this joint uh, 
open ecosystem to foster um, developer um, and, and creation uh, for XR uh, in the environment that is beneficial for multiple players in the industry. And, um, and you know, maybe to uh, tap a little bit uh, deeper on uh, this idea of operators working together, can you tell us on Snapdragon Spaces? Why, you know, is Telefonica interested in Snapdragon Spaces? So we believe Snapdragon Spaces is the best solution at the moment to help our developers, those we work directly with or those that we are uh, partnering with, to, to accelerate the innovation they have in mind and to bring uh, compelling experiences. Um, Snapdragon Spaces is, as a program uh, it's gonna it's gonna help us to um, identify what uh, we can do with perception technologies, for example, those that are available in uh, in uh, Qualcomm based uh, products, uh, so that the developers don't need to uh, reinvent the wheel, but reuse the foundation that you created under Snapdragon Spaces, and they're concentrate on. Um, compelling content com that will then generate recurrent use of those uh, apps and services. So I think Snapdragon Spaces is going to play a vital role uh, in, in the ecosystem creation. Uh, and that's why we identify the opportunity very early. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we've signed a strategic uh, partnership agreement with you that goes beyond an annual agreement, but goes into even three years. Yeah, uh, long-term partnership. No, thanks, uh, Dan. I really appreciate the the, the partnership uh, between uh, Qualcomm and uh, Telefonica in XR, the metaverse, uh, both um, in um, bringing Snapdragon Spaces to developers, but also making sure that uh, uh, through the hardware manufacturers, the OEMs that you interact with, also incentivizing everyone to follow you know this common foundational layer so that everyone benefits we avoid fragmentation we have um, um, leverage between uh, devices between content that is um, built for for everyone danny any anything else you know that you want to tell our our audience about um, you know your view for xr uh, what Telefonica and the broader operator community is doing for XR? Um, the, I would only say that um, uh, we cannot be as, as skeptics or you know have doubts about the arrival of this revolution. I think uh, those who question whether this was just a hype um, are wrong, basically. This is unstoppable. This is where the industry is going to go and we are witnessing the alignment of a number of planets uh, in terms of the building blocks that will facilitate the creation of the next generation internet and the, uh, uh, the XR experiences and the XR devices that That's are going right. to be in the hands of our customers. So I think I want to leave a very positive message uh, um, to get rid of those um, uh, possible negative uh, perceptions that people may have. Please try devices, try experiences. You'll be blown away with uh, what you will experience firsthand. Uh, I'm I'm totally with you, Danny. I mean, uh, we of course are pri uh, uh, privileged uh, to see what uh, is coming over the next uh, few years, and um, I'm confident on the journey uh, towards uh, spatial compute. And um, like you said, you know, we, we don't go by the what's hot in the press right now. You know, this is an investment, you know, at Qualcomm, we started more than 10 years ago, right? So, and, um, you know, it's probably going to have another 10 years of, a, of evolution. Um, we are here to, um, to invest and make that a reality. So once again, uh, uh, Danny, thank you for joining us. Thank you for providing your views on uh, XR and uh, how we work together to make this a reality. Great, thank you, and see you in San Diego soon. Okay, looking forward to it. Thank you for watching one more episode of Exploring the Metaverse. If you wanna watch older episodes, click here.
If you want to subscribe to our channel, click here. If you want more information about Snapdragon Spaces, click here. And if you want to have access to the white paper that Danny mentioned in our conversation, click here.